Boys and girls, this is the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Kylo Riley, Roderick Strong, and you're listening to Going In Raw, baby. Hey guys, this is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, legit Fox, and you are watching Going In Raw. You like that? Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. Yeah, welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. And of course, available wherever podcasts can be found. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notify bell next to it. Make sure you always get your new Going In Raw notifications. We're also available on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Steve and Larson. A variety, a variety, a variety of reward tea. A variety of right. reward tiers over there. This is our third video of the day. Seven in the last two days, Steve. I know. It's a lot. Uh, we have a bunch of reward, weird, reward tiers over there. Go to there to help support us. Yes, please. Here we go. Anyways. Also, YouTube channel memberships. We have those now. You get five bonus episodes similar to the $5 Patreon tier. Mm -hmm. uh, so check that out if you're yes, interested. Yes, please. Yes, please. Also, emojis. Got those two. Badges. Yeah. Anyways, it's Friday. Two days from now. Stomping grounds. Ooh. Whoa. So much excitement. It's like an in-your-house pay-per-view. We're going to be uh, doing a live stream of our reactions. Mm -hmm. not, of our not the show. Overwhelmed reactions to the show. We will not be showing the show. That, uh, that's it's illegal. We'll get our, ch our channel. Exclusive domain of canceled. the WWE to do that. So either check it out on pay-per-view or check out the WWE Network to do so. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be uh, doing our live, rea live reactions. Hopefully you all will join us. It's usually a fun time. Oh, yeah. Regardless if it's a bad show, uh, a good show. As long as it's not a boring show. Yeah. Well, then sometimes we even start getting loopy on the boring shows. It's really possible. Like last time, I forget which pay-per-view it was. One time we spent a whole pay-per-view doing impressions. Yeah. One time we had uh, a live auction for us to bash or not bash Bret Hart. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. Somebody gave us money and said, bash Bret Hart. Okay. And then somebody else, I said, yeah, I don't really feel comfortable doing that. So somebody else kicked in money and said, don't bash him. Yeah, and then it went from there. And it, it spiraled. We made a couple hundred bucks on Super yeah, it Chats. Was good. It's good. It worked out for us. That was a good business plan right there. It was. Well, we can't really. That was, that was lightning in a bottle. That's something that developed organically. We can't just say, oh, we're going to bash this person and expect someone to pay us not to do it. We but can't expect that. If somebody out there wants to pay us money to bash somebody, we'll take it under consideration. If somebody wants to pay us to bash, to not bash that person, we'll take that under consideration. Yes. But anyway, anyways, uh, it's Friday. We're going to talk about. New wrestling yeah. news. Something we should take into consideration is that all the wrestling is, is the most popular wrestling promotion in the history of all wrestling promotions, Steve. <laughs> who can I actually love that glean from what Meltzer's talking about in the newsletter this Boy, week. Boy, Meltzer, who do you think loves all eat more, you or Meltzer? Well, no. mm. <laughs> Meltzer probably. <laughs> Were you about to say I'm not on the payroll? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just confirming something. You're not indicating that somebody else is necessarily well isn't he isn't he like a consultant or something like that is he i don't know i, I could make that up i don't know <laughs> i don't know if that was ever official but it wouldn't surprise me i mean he's got to be i mean here's the thing dude he talks to them we know that for a fact yeah that ain't you know he has no okay so sean ross sap has the final word on this a couple days ago Oh, so there were rumors of him so yeah, serving consultant. Okay, okay. okay, okay. So that wasn't out of nowhere. So he, so he, Sean Ross Sapp said Dave Meltzer has told me he has no, no affiliation. Affili 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 All right, whatsoever. my apologies to Dave. Not on their payroll. Confirmed by Sean Ross Sapp. Good job. A, a trusted source, if there ever was one. Oh, and this stream right here. So here's what Dave had to say. Okay. Um, quote, according to professionals in the ticket industry, was that the show had the most activity when tickets first went on sale of any ticket to a pro wrestling event in the history by a wide margin. Uh, he goes on, Dave does, to mention the reported number of people who are in waiting rooms trying to get tickets. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, some people, we saw some tweets up in like the 60,000s. We heard from a friendo that was upwards of 70. Um, and then Dave says numbers as high as 75,000. 75,000 people in line to get tickets. Yeah. Um, and they provide a bit of context, historically speaking. Quote, the biggest WrestleMania in history as far as actual ticket sales went, the Dallas show in 2016 legitimately sold 79,800 tickets, but it also wasn't sold out until the week before the show. This past year's event in the New York market, in East Rutherford, New Jersey, does not have actual ticket sales numbers available. The show legitimately sold out well in advance, 
The previous time, WWE ran WrestleMania in the same stadium. They sold 69,000 tickets. Nice. So the number, which is expected to be revealed in WWE's uh, KPI report in late July, early August, would be very close to that figure. Mm. It sold out even further in advance due to it being in the New York market, but had nowhere close to that number of orders the first day or month, let alone the first 15 minutes of the first day. Lightning in a bottle. This is a big, big deal. It's, it's, it's been interesting to see them seemingly with every show generate more interest. That was one of the other points that he made during his write-up about this, uh, Melter, uh, is that you'd have expected, given that this is their third show, that the demand wouldn't be quite as high. But in fact, the second show, Double or Nothing, like Sold out blew away than... the first one. Yeah. And this one blew away the second one. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, that is very interesting stuff. I mean, in, in theory, it seems like based on the demand for the tickets for All Out, in terms of time, it could have sold out faster had the ticketing system for Sears Center been able to handle the number of requests quicker. Yeah, I think, I mean, at this point, like the idea of how fast did it sell out is so ne- it's like no it's that's, just, that's it's just that's, abstract that's a, well i think yeah how fast is just how 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 well the the, the technology can keep up with the exactly yeah. i think these numbers as far as people waiting in line to actually buy tickets that's something else entirely that's that's massive that's yeah. crazy yeah yeah that's pretty huge um apparently neither fighter fest nor fight for the fallen have sold out yet um but the way they've kind of all the kind of promoted and booked those shows um, they don't. They they don't feel like they're quite the huge events at Double or Nothing or, or all in all out. They don't. I was surprised with the fight for the fallen one. That just sort of seemed like a, a throwaway thing. So I don't know what the difference is in terms of like why they would brand one show different than another one. Well, I wonder too if if getting started they didn't want to do pay per view, pay per view, pay per view, pay per view like in successive months. Mm-hmm, yeah, thinking that would be oversaturate their product. So they have Double or Nothing as kind of their, their proper launch. It did really well. Mm. Yeah, Fighter Fest come up in a couple of weeks, uh, about a week. Um, and it's, it's, it's put on in conjunction with the gaming right, yeah. uh, uh, convention, CEO. CEO. Yeah. Um, and and uh, it, it seems smaller in scope. Mm-hmm. They're not pushing it in the same manner they did Double or Nothing mm. or... Or all in. Or I don't all even out. know what the capacity for whatever that oh, venue is. I don't know either. Yeah. I mean, the card looks good. No, it's a good card. Yeah, um, good talent. Yeah, and then so then you have fight for the fall, and after that in July, again a smaller show. I don't know. Has anything been announced for that? When's the co- when's the tag that's match? That's the Cody and Dustin versus Young Bucks. That's the, that's fight for fight for the fall. So. Okay, because Cody's taking on Darby Allen at Fighter Fest. And okay, what's the event? Do we know what the capacity for Fight mm-hmm. for the Fallen is? Mm-hmm. Somewhere right. in Jacksonville. Yeah, that's a, be- that's a benefit show, basically. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's right. And then their next proper pay per view is going to be All Out because mm-hmm. both I think both Fight for the Fallen and and uh, so Fight for the Fallen is taking place at Daly's Place and it's at fifty five hundred. Okay. Okay. Um, both Fight for the Fallen and uh, Fighter Fest are going to be available free on, on Bleacher Report Live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of feel like they're treating those more as TV. Yeah, or like little house shows anyways, mm-hmm. you know, like little supplementary shows mm-hmm. to keep the brand alive, to keep, you know, interest. And on top of that, sort of a heat check. Yeah. You know, it's like if if the demand was like crazy through the roof for Fighter Fest and for uh, uh, Fight for the Fallen, it's like, okay, now we're like, now it's just ridiculous. Now how far can we really take this thing? Yeah. Not saying that they can't with this, but you know what I mean. Yeah, and also it's, it's pretty fascinating within the span of a year, less than a year, where they've already established two holiday weekends as des- destination wrestling yeah. events. Yeah, You got, and I think Tony Khan, I don't know if it's in the Stone Cold podcast or some other outlet spoke about how they want to keep doing the Labor Day weekend show in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, Melser mentioned that in the newsletter as well. To make it a yearly annual event that people can come to. And I wonder if they're going to do the same with Vegas Mm -hmm. on on, uh, on Memorial Day weekend. And if they keep doing StarCast in conjunction with both of those and make them huge events that are destinations. Mm -hmm. um, The only thing that you get in the way, Meltzer did mention this newsletter as well, and I kind of thought about it. We kind of faced this Mm -hmm. when uh, going to Double or Nothing is the expense of going to Vegas on a holiday weekend. Yeah, it is. It is pricey. 
Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, obviously I didn't stop it from selling out, but, um, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. I mean, flying in, it almost costs twice as much to fly in, Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and when whatnot, it's it's a, it's a pretty massive expense. So I don't know if that's going to come into the equation at some point, whether it's beyond AEW's end, uh, or more likely, uh, attendance being, uh, hit because Mm -hmm. people just can't spend that kind of money twice a year. Well, I think given the fact, if if they're not looking to do monthly pay-per-views, which they've said, Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, going with like a, I don't know, six a year or whatever they're going to do, uh, they can, they can sort of, people will treat them as something that I can spend more money on. You know, I'm okay with spending more money to get on a plane to go to Vegas Memorial Day weekend. Um, because I'm not, you know, trying to do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I guess the the way they kind of have done it too, where Chicago is, you know, it's on the eastern part side of the Midwest, and you have Vegas in the eastern part of the West. So it's like you have the Vegas show, which kind of catered to one half of the country, and the Chicago show, which can kind of cater to the other half of the country. Yeah, yeah. Hypothetically speaking. Yeah. It is crazy though the spotlight that's on them, the microscope they're under right now. You know, to do like to launch this, it's such an ambitious thing, and it oh, has yeah. it has. I mean, interest is up so much in that. You know, in all the wrestling, mm-hmm. like there is such a big spotlight on them right now. Yeah, um, that it is. Yeah, and it's crazy. Like it's not. It's not surprising, man. People are thirsty. One of the one of the numbers that was crazy to me was only two hundred and forty seven people that bought uh, double or nothing purchased what was the last WWE pay-per-view what was that what was, Meltzer was talking about in the newsletter what was the last WWE pay-per-view uh let's super show down then before that was money in the super bank super show down 247 people that's nothing mm-hmm. that's nothing sort of indicates there's like a whole I mean I know that people aren't you know really didn't really want to check out and there's the network also obviously um which is probably the bigger issue there so yeah. I'm not really how closely yeah. you can look at that but uh what's that where the, the, the Meltzer AEW rumor started. <laughs> Who started it? Where did that come from? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, moving on. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, pay-per-view. I, I forgot he was talking about pay-per-view. Yeah. Right? Nobody, nobody gets WWE pay-per-views, man. No. Uh, anyway, speaking of WWE pay-per-views, we got a stomping no grounds coming up. The current one, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is why only 247 people bought it. Yeah. Um, Shane McMahon, he's getting a big. You know, I don't. Uh, would you consider it a big push? Yeah. <laughs> he's dominating TV time, man. On two <laughs> different shows. Yeah. I know. He's he's feuding with Roman Reigns. Yes, he's getting a major he's, push. He's a focal. He's a he is a focal point. Yes. He is a focal point. I would be stunned if they put that title on him, though. I would be stunned. I wouldn't be at this point. Uh, this is reports coming from Fightful Select. If you don't subscribe to Fightful Select, Select, do so, please. Yeah. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp, everybody over at Fightful does great work. Uh, uh, and uh, oh, I love it, man. You yeah. get like just random email yeah, notifications. Email and it's news. Holy crap. Look what's happening to Lars Sullivan, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there seems to be some bubbling backstage resentment towards Shane McMahon's push. While Fightful is clear to mention that Shane hasn't been getting... This is from them directly. Uh, no, I, I paraphrase. Oh, you paraphrase it. Yes. Okay, paraphrase by Larson. Yes. While Fightful is clear to mention that Shane hasn't been getting any heat personally, sources Fightful has spoken with says it's, quote, infuriating that Shane is getting so much TV time in a post-wildcard rule WWE where screen time already comes at a premium. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's yeah. got to be annoying. Yeah, uh, Fightful Select also mentions that, uh, that this frustration is compounded by the fact that, you know, basically everybody's on the road mm-hmm. four or five days a week, mm-hmm. wrestling all the time. Shane only shows up for TV, mm-hmm. gets a massive push. Yeah. Whereas these guys who are putting in the hours, putting their body on the line all the time, can't even get any screen time. Yeah. I completely understand why it'd be frustrating. It's frustrating as viewers to watch, too. It sucks as a viewer to watch that stuff. Rusev tweeted back to a fan asking oh, about yeah, that. that. Uh, they asked him, let's see if I can see this. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, Rusev, how fr- this is from uh, Gepi Comedy One. How frustrating is it to see a Shane McMahon on TV instead of you? He said, it, I'm not frustrated. It's normal. He's the boss's son. Yeah. And then somebody responded to that or re, uh, did a quote retweet said seeing WWE employees just openly dunk on the product. Uh, sure. Is, uh, sure. is a thing that happens now. Rusev responded to that by just saying, I'm not an employee. Yeah. <laughs> Which is true. It's true. He's an independent contractor. Yes. 
So, uh, so yeah, not surprised, not surprising no. at all, man. No. And it's like, I don't know. It's, it's so, dude, it's so weird. I mean, it is and it isn't, but it's like, you hear these stories about 70 man backstage giving these raw, raw pep talks and then they're running around with contracts here. Here. Five more years. Sign this. Five more years, sign. twice as much money. Oh, twice as much money. Here. Okay, now sign, sign it now. Sign, sign it now. Well, I want to think sign about it. I'll read it over. No, no, I'll eat starting in October. Can you just sign but it I here? I want my lawyers to look at Please it. Please sign it now. No, I want my lawyers to look at it. That's what they're doing. Yeah, no, and if, and if they're, I guess also, we also heard that they're saying that if you don't sign it now, then they might pull the offer, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, fine. Just release me or something, you yeah. know? Like... Yeah. I'll write up my contract and pull uh, John Mox. Hey, I don't see my name on the whiteboard to go out there today. Yeah. Yeah. Shane's out there. Yeah, Shane's out there. I don't know, man. It's super frustrating, man. It is. I want. I they, they've signed so many people. I want to see these wrestlers. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many potential dream matches that, out there that we could see. We can be witnessing week after week. If We're you, not because Shane's on TV all the damn time. If you really take a look at that Breakout Star tournament in NXT, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's eight people, eight more people in NXT that are now going to be fight. They're all ready. They're all ready to go. Mm -hmm. They're all going to be fighting for space on NXT. Yeah. And it's like a couple of years from now, they're going to be all going up to the main roster. I'll be Where? Going 205 Live. Where exactly? Yeah. I know. I know. It's, kinda, it's, it's, it's pretty much almost got to the point where where if you're in NXT, it feels like you're going to be in NXT for a while. Mm-hmm. Because there's just no there's no spots on main. Which, by the way, half those guys don't seem to mind. People want to go back. I know. Uh, even uh, God, who said that I asked to go? Oh, Ty, Ty Dillinger, Sean Spears uh, had an interview. I think it was with Chris Van Vliet mm -hmm. um, just this past week, and he talked about uh, he talked about a lot of stuff, and he was apparently very diplomatic about it. I didn't read it. I saw the transcript, or I saw like the paraphrasing from uh, Dave Meltzer yeah. in the Wrestling Observer newsletter. But uh, he said he asked if he can go back to NXT. And he said when he asked, nobody like they weren't letting anybody do that. Hmm. Um, him and Bob Roode both pitched Triple H. Remember when you were talking about the title thing? Yeah. Uh, Triple H said no. <laughs> Probably because he had so many people coming up. Yeah, yeah. Like that seemed to be the problem. So both Ty and Bob Roode pitched it? Yeah, they pitched it together. Yeah. They said, hey, this is a good idea. Because they, they, they looked like they were doing a thing there. Yeah, it was a good idea. Yeah. Even, well, if, even if Ty had, had it just for one set of tapings. Yeah, I know. It would have been huge. I know. Um, like the storyline was there to be told. But he said, the funny thing is, he said that he went in on his last day when he was leaving. He went into Vince's office and he just gave him his two cents. He said, you know, there needs to be uh, credibility is the word that he used. Mm -hmm. He told Vince that your wrestlers need credibility. Not everybody needs to get pushed because it's kind of impossible. Yeah. He said, but when people go out for a match, it shouldn't be so automatic that people know who's going to win. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he said, I guess that was the basis of his spiel. And uh, McMahon, he said, he just looked at me funny and said, oh, shit. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't hear how he, how he said, oh, shit. So I don't know if it was like Vince saying, oh, shit, or oh, shit. It was, it was like he was having a realization that was the case, or he, uh, the realization he's having is that Ty is asking to leave. <laughs> right, yeah, I don't know. I think he was already out the door at that point. Oh, I think okay. he had already been granted Got, his, Gotcha, his gotcha, gotcha. But... Uh, but yeah, I don't know what that means. I mean, he's 100% right. I know. I know. 75% of the time, as soon as the match bell rings, you know exactly who's going to win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons I don't really like squash matches. There's no drama involved. Yeah. At least if there's a local jobber who puts a bit of a fight to a veteran, oh, there's a story being told. I can get into that. Well, these days, dude, even if these days you, you've signed so many people that there should never be, I mean, as much as I do like seeing local jobbers, and I do, I love seeing that, and I, I like squash matches. But I recognize, I, I'll put it this way, I would rather see somebody on the main roster that could use television time mm -hmm. in a really good effort, you know? Mm -hmm. And then maybe I'll get the thought in my head that this person could be somebody, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Like an Apollo Crews, who, God bless him, now he seems to be in a thing with Andrade, yeah. which is awesome, it is. which That's, is fantastic. That could lead to something really good. But there's like a ton of people backstage that like we don't see, you know? Yeah. I mean, shit, we don't even see uh, Finn Balor, Nakamura. I know. Finn Balor is the Intercontinental Champion. He hasn't yeah. been on TV forever. Yeah. I know. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And, and, and you know, we, I'm, I'm shocked they don't look back at the last time where Shane was the focus and realize, okay, this is a mistake to make him the, the primary focus of any show, much mm -hmm. less two. Yeah. I mean, when he was in that thing with Daniel Bryan and Owens, uh, leading up to the meeting a couple years ago, 
it dragged down all of SmackDown. Yeah, I know. It, it did. really dragged down the whole show. Even here's the thing though. Like, even if the there there are a couple things to think about there. Even if I could see it that maybe, just maybe, McMahon thinks, well, yes, Shane is out there. He's the guy who we see, but he's also got Drew with him. So yeah. you can consider it like a Drew co-starring thing. Yeah, so now, we're using Drew in that And position. now Elias, maybe the revival as Elias well. Elias and the revival. And I actually kind of like that as a click. I kind of like that no, as a No, I have faction. no problem with that either. But here's the thing. It, if you take a look at that, what have we said for ages now? You need to go down the route of factions. Yeah. You really do. When yes. Pritchard was talking about it in that podcast, talking about 98, factions were the thing. Mm -hmm. It's beyond me that they're not using more factions. I know. Finn, AJ, the club. Why aren't they a faction? Yeah, I don't know. You have the cool. I've said this a million times. I know that. But it's like you can have so many cool things going on with factions, man. You really can. And it's like maybe at that point, not everybody's going to want to be the low guy in a faction. But wouldn't you rather be the low guy in a faction than not be anywhere? The common thread of people who are disgruntled with working with WB is they're just not involved. They're not involved. They're not on TV. They're nothing. You yeah. know, it's like I'd rather be a Chase Owens than, I mean, Eric Young was on TV, but. Honestly, in Eric Young, he's not in matches. No. You know? No. Wouldn't you rather be the crown jewel, Larson? Yeah, because at least you're, you're out there and you're involved. Exactly. Uh, speaking of somebody who might not be involved for too much longer. Oh, listen to that segue. Daniel Bryan might be retiring soon. Jimmy Jacobs got him on his podcast. Yeah, they're reviewing a book. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, Is that how you do it? Is that how you, you you get WWE people? I'm sure they're friends. That's on your how you show? <laughs> Hold on a second. This is a good question. You can't deny. Jimmy Jacobs got fired from the WWE for hanging out with yeah, AEW. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. And he's able to snag Daniel Bryan? Yeah. WWE doesn't like when people do that. But it's yeah. Daniel Bryan. He, he, I think he you think he, he goes where he wants to, huh? Yeah, he kind of gets carte blanche. <laughs> to a degree. He can kind of do what he wants. Yeah. And, if, and I, have the, I have the feeling that if, if someone at WWE has an issue with it, he really doesn't care. Can we reach out to, like, the Canellises? Can, we, can you be they on our show? a book review with us? A book review. Yeah. Yeah. And be like, hey, can you come on our podcast? Well, I'm sure the thing is that Jimmy Jacobs and Daniel Bryan, I'm guessing, are friends. I want to be friends with the Canellises. Okay. I'll Instagram. Oh, it's a yeah, beautiful send, baby you send have. Send a DM. Send a DM. Yeah, what's wrong with saying you have a beautiful baby? Nothing. But if, if, if that's if that's just a DM they get, it's like, why is this person that I don't know DMing me that? And then I'll say, want to do a podcast on my show? Again, <laughs> blocked. <laughs> blocked. But here's the thing. Why would they? Oh, well, yeah, they don't really know me. Exactly. But I've said I love their baby. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Daniel blocked. Bryan was on Jimmy Jacobs' podcast. What blocked. did he say? Uh, he's transcripted from WrestleZone. How did he like the book? Uh Six out of ten, seemingly. Um, they were talking about uh, Daniel Bryan was talking about transitioning from pro wrestling to what he's going to be doing after pro wrestling. Captain Planet, utilizing the skill set he's developed as a pro wrestler uh, to something else after pro wrestling. Okay, cool. Um, and as we had to say, quote, "That's the journey I'm on right now. I'm looking in a couple years while I'm no longer a full time wrestler. I'll always wrestle a little bit because I love doing it. After my contract is up, I don't want to be a full time wrestler anymore." Didn't he say he wanted to do environmentalism? Yeah, I think that's Stuff kind of the idea, yeah. Wants to be Captain Planet. Yeah. That's cool. Good for him. Which is great. Yeah, that's awesome. But then he also said a couple weeks ago um, on somebody else's show that, or in some other interview, that he wants to wrestle until he literally can't. Yeah, but if he does, he does like one match a year, then he maybe do that. A little bit here and there, yeah. Yeah, and he has he, like an Undertaker schedule and takes better care of his body. <laughs> right, exactly. He'll be wrestling until he's in his mid seventies. Yes, and then with uh, augmentation, shit. That's gonna be a whole other division, though. You can go into his hundred and seventies. Yeah, you can have the the lock up the world augmentation championship. Tell me you wouldn't watch that. I'd watch this shit. That's like, that's like that. Robot Warriors at that point. Yeah, but also with people, and it's all disturbing when they get like half, you know, dismembered, and they're like, ah. ah, ah. I guess that can be kind of half shoot. You can shoot on the robot part. <laughs> Because they can be easy, relatively easily repaired. <laughs> yeah. But what if they experience pain when their robot parts come apart? <laughs> well, they, they, uh, well, they should tap out Sparks then. Sparks come flying out. They should tap out then. That's going to be violent. It'd be awesome. like the rebirth of Pancrase. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, Daniel Bryan, a couple more years. So, how, much, how, how long is that deal of his? Three I don't know. Years? He said a couple more years. So, I'm guessing he has two more years on his deal. Two more years left? Yeah. Cool. Right so on. maybe he'll get a, a, a Lesnar type schedule for mm -hmm. a few more years. And then, yeah. Then do the Undertaker thing. Then pop up here and there. And they'll start a, a environmentalism podcast. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's probably what he's going to do. What's he going to call it? 
Um, Planet's Champion. Planet's Champion. I like With it. Brian Danielson. With Brian Danielson. That's good. That's good. It'll be a mix of shoot interviews and environmental well, tips. Well, hopefully, it'd be great if he could. That was the most half-assed knocking on no, wood. No, I had hopefully. a thought. I just had a thought. <laughs> hopefully, uh, he could somehow uh, license his name from WB because we know he's Brian Danielson. Mm -hmm. People know. who watch E do or yeah. Bravo. No, E is right. E, yeah. E Network. They may know his name is Brian Danielson. But I don't know if it's widely known amongst casual wrestling fans that his name is Brian Danielson. Mm -hmm, they yeah. might see Brian Danielson, unless there's a picture on his thumbnail, think, I don't, well, who is this guy? Daniel Bryan. Mm -hmm. I know who he is. Yeah. I know what he's all about. Yeah. He talked trash about Fresno. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. For being polluted. And then he can have a whole episode on Fresno. Yeah. You know, why they need to change it, why they need to fix it, change it, why they're impotent, submissive. That's right. Weak. Change speaking it. Of, speaking of people who probably want to change it, Lars, he wants to change his knees. Yeah. Because he, yeah, yeah. he had a knee injury report on last week. Yeah, apparently initially the thought was it wasn't that bad. Well, Melster's saying in the newsletter, yeah, it, it is, is that, that bad. bad. <laughs> Quote, Sullivan's knee injury report on last week was worse than anticipated, but we don't know more details than that. He underwent an MRI during the week. The only stuff we've heard is that the company believes he will be out six to nine months not so nice that's so six that six to nine is you're not talking nice. ligament damage at that point i that's, think I'm, he had a, he had knee issues in nxt yeah he was out for a while and then he, they yeah. had him do that ladder match yeah not a good idea that sucks and here's the thing he came back so okay i i forget where were, when did the injury happen uh un unknown unknown know. yeah like it's not like he's done a whole lot since he came back. It could, yeah, no. What could be? I mean, it, I don't know if he's been re wrestling house shows or anything. Mm. I don't know, but you know, there can be obviously traumatic knee injury, and there can be just uh, wear and tear knee injuries. I don't know which knee he got worked on last time. Whether this mm. is a different knee, this could be more wear and tear. It could be just wear and tear from working out, man. Yeah, I know. Um, so who knows? Yeah, man, that's a bummer. Especially, you know, he's he's a pretty good sized dude. Yeah, that's a lot of burn on the joints to yeah. carry around that much girth. Um, so, well, hopefully, he'll get some augmentations in his knees and he'll be fine. The first uh, robotic heavyweight champion. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. I'd be down for that. Um, let's talk about the Nikki Bella stuff. She was on Jimmy Fallon and talking about why she had to retire. Yeah, this is messed up. This is pretty messed up. And uh, apparently, she was getting her neck checked out because she was thinking that her and Bree might come back to challenge for the women tag titles. And uh, she found out that she had a herniated disc below the surgery she had on this before, neck on her disc on the neck in the neck she had before. Sorry, and then had a cyst on her brain. Jesus. And Christ. they said no more wrestling. God dang. How do you know how one gets a cyst on their brain? So all I know about cysts are that little sacks of fat. Yeah. Yeah. They're gross. They're benign growths. They're awesome. I had one right here. Yeah, and you got a second Steve growing out of your chest. I, I recall. I used to be able to squeeze Don't. it, and it would squirt Don't. out in a straight line. It was an awesome We're party trick. subscribers all over the place now because of that horrendous story. Sometimes I would sit in the shower and just do this. Oh, that's so vile. And watch it go against the wall. That's so gross. It was kind of orangey. That's disgusting. It is disgusting. I agree. It is gross. Did I ever send you the picture of when they took it out yes, the second I've time? Yes, I've seen it. So they took it out once. And it and came then 10 back. Years it was later, too powerful. It came back. It was like, no, I am alive. And I was like, no, you're not. You're dead. So I went to the the hospital place, and uh, it was man, it was big. It was like this big. Yeah, I remember. And I wanted to keep it. That's disgusting. I wanted to put it right here and see if I could grow it. I'd quit. <laughs> Blast it with radiation. I'd quit. And then he's like, I can do wrestling podcasts. And that'd be your co-host then, because I'd find another line of work. Steve here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have, think of Lars? You'd have Raw Gate Mutant as your co-host. <laughs> exactly. I can't believe you don't see the money-making potential in that. I'm man. not interested in, 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 in dealing with that situation, though. <laughs> oh, man. Not at all. That is too So much. that's a bummer to hear. You know, you want to hear about me dealing with serious... Anything with the brain is scary. God, no. Cyst on the brain is scary. Do we do any research on that? No. Cyst. Brain cyst. cyst. On the brain. Still brain looking. cysts are fluid-filled sacs that may form in the brain. Let's see what they look like. Oh, God. <laughs> They're not actually going to show brains. I don't know, man. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, Ew, what is cyst. that guy? It looks like a Twinkie. Ah. 
<laughs> Look at this, but he's smiling though. That's a good size cyst that guy. It's like Ray say. Liotta in, uh, in Hannibal. Uh, Hannibal, yeah, or Red yeah, Dragon, whatever one was. Alien sacks growing in heads. Well, I don't know if there's any complications that could arise from. That's what I want to know. I imagine if stuff starts pushing on the brain, yeah, that can cause some issues. That's probably not good because mine grew. If it grows, it's gonna start pushing on the brain. Possible, yeah. All sorts of problems. You'd be like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> like, why do you have a tick? No. And I'm guess unless there's some serious complications, do you want to go there? She want to go and crack up over her head to get it removed. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. God, hopefully she's okay. Yeah, I hope so. Tama Tonga starting beef with WWE. Talk about that for a second. All right. He tweeted this out. Yeah. WWE trying to come in our territory with the club. Cool story, bro. Get the fuck out of here. But then he puts get the fuck out of here in quotation marks. So I don't know what that means. And then he says, uh, don't mind me. I'm just stating the obvious AEW coming in hard on their territory. Yeah. I like that he puts them over. So uh, brain cysts can form during, uh, it might form because of head injury, other trauma to the brain. Dude, don't be a wrestler. That's so messed up. Ow. Uh, all right, so here we go. Questions. How's it being treated? There you go. The antibiotics? No, I'm not going to do anything about it. Treat with surgery, radiotherapy, or chemotherapy? Oof. Oof. Ouch. Man, that's lousy. The Wrestle Dude yeah. asks, who on the WWE roster would you want to personally repackage? Can I just repackage Shinsuke? Oh, well, it's Eric Young. Yeah. He's our greatest. I think you, he's our greatest yeah. repackage. He needs to be the, the love doctor, the auteur, the provo- provocateur, the pornographer The pre-Giuliani Times Square Pornogra- filmmaker. Pornographer extraordinaire. I, Done way too many videos the last two days. Uh, uh, a Chongo has no name. Why aren't Rusev and Lana being utilized as a money honeymoon period passed? Melser says that he just asked for time off. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Interesting question. Parachuting parakeet. What goes better with pie? Ice cream or custard? Oh, well, it's ice cream. I do like some custard. How though. come whipped cream's not an option? You know how I prefer my. Uh, well, no, Cool Whip is really the, the best. Yeah, especially with pumpkin pie. It's got to be cool. cool Whip. Oh, God. Yeah, cool Whip's so I agree. good. I agree. Uh, I do like me a custard donut, though. A custard filled donut. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, I want to eat one now, but I can't. Uh, Blake Elizondo. So Simon Miller is going to face Nathan Cruz in an ups and downs match. What wrestlers would you face? Would you two face in the first ever going in raw match? And what are the rules? Well, we'd got to be a tag team, man. That's what he says. Yeah. Okay. Who would we, who'd we face? I feel like I could beat, I feel like you and I could take on Oscar Meyer, AKA Adam mayhem, the baloney man. And a partner of his choosing. What about his manager? Because he, I don't even think that guy's real. <laughs> I don't think he's real. TK du- Drack? Something like that. Drac? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Pretty sure we could. I, I think we could take them on because one of them dudes is fake. <laughs> <laughs> one of those guys is a burner account for Adam Mayhem. Oh, man. Adam Rosen going in raw math for Socko. What's his legacy? Mr. Socko. Oh, that's pretty. It's pretty high up. Oh, we got to do the, what's the rules for the going in raw match? Oh, the rules for the going in raw match. Yeah. Uh, well, it's tornado because Oscar Meyer is not going to have like a partner because Baloney Butt's not going to have a partner. <laughs> that baloney, right, that fried yeah. baloney sandwich yeah. out of mayhem. Uh, Adam Rosen, yeah, going in raw math for Socko. I'm going to take a guess. I'll just take a whiff of this. Uh, four and a half. Yeah, that sounds fair. <laughs> His look is terrible. Yeah, I know. Yowie, wow. We have the winners at Mania. Seth, Kofi, Becky, Iconics, and Nice. Power rank who loses the titles first to last. In other words, who will have the longest reign out of those people? Uh, Becky. Becky over Seth? Yeah. There's the, the, the specter of Brock cashing in. Uh, I will give Becky the edge. And, like, really, there's not a whole lot of competition on Raw right now. The Raw Women's Division. So I think... Nice has a good chance to lose it this weekend. Yeah. The Iconics have a good chance at losing it to the Kabuki Warriors. Uh Uh-huh. Kofi, maybe this summer. Kofi, maybe maybe at SummerSlam? And then Seth, this... It depends on if Brock's going to cash in on him or not. Yeah. So I think Becky's going to have the longest reign. 
Yeah, right now it's looking like Becky. So I'd say Becky or Kofi, because you're right about the cash in. Uh, Paul Hook, who will be the first wrestler to leave WWE and not be signed by All Elite? It says Moxley and Spears are the only two so far, and both were picked up. Uh, who could be released that's not a particularly great wrestler? Well, how about this? I know it seems like uh, Nakamura is really happy living in the States, but say he chooses not to resign with WWE and says, all right, I'll go back to Japan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know, though, man. If he goes back to, like, the reason he went to WWE is for a vacation. Oh, I understand that. He's old. I understand all that. I'm saying it, 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 that's a situation where it could happen. I don't think it will. I don't think it's likely. Is there a younger version of him? Like, oh, he, so, doesn't mention, so, he doesn't mention Kenta. Kenta, yeah, for yeah. example, yeah. Like, that's a good example right there. Because he, he literally said, I could have gone back to Noah, but I, well, I want to go international, mm-hmm. and that's New Japan. Do you see that he's going to continue living in the States, though? Oh, that's cool. That's neat. One of the more interesting things is this sort of, I'm not going to say like beef between, but like the the de- very rapidly deteriorating non-relationship between AEW and New Japan. Yeah, I know. That was how that was in the newsletter a bit. Moxley's not, like AEW's not allowing Moxley to do the Dallas show. That's not surprising to me, though. It's not surprising, but it's still pretty interesting how mm-hmm. originally they sort of wanted to have, hey, you know, let's have kind of a thing. And it makes you wonder, like, Moxley's going to be a very, very featured player in AEW. Yeah. Does New Japan really want to feature him that much if that's going to be the situation well, between I the two of them? I think they would in, in the short term if it benefits them. Until it, until TV happens. Yeah, I'm guessing at that point Moxley, his availability is going to dwindle and won't have a whole opportunity. This is kind of like, I feel like, his lone run in New Japan. Who all has been, who all has, been has expressed interest in leaving WWE? Luke Harper. He'd have to be an AEW guy. Yeah. He'd have to be. Or he could, you know, whether they express interest or, or otherwise, he could say, all right, I'm going to go do the indie thing to reinvent myself for a bit. Yeah. You never know. Uh, G. Sith, do you think WB may actually not be not be getting into complex storylines with the facts? fact the move to Fox is coming and they want it to be fresh? I know I'm giving them too much credit here. I honestly think they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. I think that, I think that, I think they don't know. I think they're booking things week to week. I think that Vince seems like the Vince probably feels like it, it, it's worked up until now. Why change it? You know, I don't know. I, I it's it's weird to me yeah, that they wouldn't be like. So no, I don't think that they're. I don't think that they're avoiding complex storylines because I mean, between now and then, you still have SummerSlam. Yeah, you can still build to a crescendo there. Yeah. They're not really doing that. Justin Warren, we just got a Del Taco in Washington Whoa! State. Lucky, lucky. If it's a new one, they might be hooking it up like the Barstow one. Maybe. Uh, Dave Schilling on Twitter uh, had a rave review of their uh, the, the meatless taco there. Interesting. So it was really good. I believe it was Dave. Um, what do you guys recommend I try and or your go-to dishes? Chicken soft taco can't go wrong. Man, you know, if, if it's anything like the Barstow one, those little cheeseburgers for 99 cents, mm-hmm. holy shit, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Uh, the steak and guac burrito with the french fries. Mm, that's super good. It's really good. Yeah, that is really good. God damn. I want, some, I want some Del Taco. Yeah, me too, and I can't. I would. I would. Oh, go, go to the doctor, man. Just get get this worked out. Maybe I'll go tonight. Uh, Steven, uh, scoops. Scoops. Is this new breakout NXT tournament a quick turnaround replacement for Worlds Collide? I don't see it as that. I see it as mm-hmm. we've signed so many people. Mm-hmm. We need to do something, so we'll do a Young Lions tournament. Pretty much, yes. A prospect tournament. Um... Yeah, Chris Pena. Would you friendos ever go to another PWG show again? It's pretty fun and in a way a better experience than WWE right now. Much love. Hell yes. Definitely. Here's what I'd rather do though. I kind of wait. Right now they're like doing it like the next set of the next PWG show is like heavily AEW. Yeah. I want to wait till they're all gone. Yeah. I want to see PWG like in a full reload period, which they're kind of in right now, yeah, but they yeah. have like this buffer of AEW guys yeah, they can yeah, use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get rid of all them. Yep. They're done. I want to see new. I want to see, because I have faith in PWG. I want to see what they can do, yeah, what they me can, too. who they can bring me in. Me too. Same. Suplex Casey, in five years, where do you see AEW? Uh, number one wrestling promotion in the world. <laughs> That's good. I see them as uh, – I 
I see them doing. I, it's, you got to think they. I mean, it all hinges on TV. If people tune yep. into their TV show, and, and I honestly, at this point, I'd be hard pressed to be. I, I would. I would be shocked if they didn't do a million in their first episode. I know. I'd be shocked. I'd I be really would. Be. Too, especially if All Out is like a stellar show. They have. They do. They've destroyed every freaking metric that they've set I know. out. I know. So I would be shocked if they didn't. If they weren't in the ratings, at least on once once a week. Competing with Raw, competing with the numbers that Raw is doing. Yeah, I would hope that would mean Raw would really get their shit together. You would hope so, but I, because I think that WWE, the brand name, I think is is an obvious large weight. advantage. Yes, 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 and absolutely. people want to see it do good. Yes. Um. So I hope that there's a healthy, productive competition between the two, where nobody's going out of business, and everybody's profiting, and it's a yes. new age of wrestling. Yes. Competition benefits everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oscar Silva is NXT getting overcrowded? Is NXT getting over? They've got an eight man. T- yes. Yes. Yeah, They've got an way. eight man tournament with polished names who could be their own wrestling company. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they are. Although I was very happy to see both uh, Zia Lee and. Uh, is it Zia Lee or Zia Lee? Zia. Zia Lee. Zia Lee and Zia Brookside. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Zia Lee and Tanera Conti, two people who you really don't see too much of. I was happy to see them get a yes. decent chunk of match yes. on NXT. Uh, Drew, another food question. So I know you're loving these right now. <laughs> Thanks. Breakfast poll. First, eggs with or without cheese. You know my stance on that one. No cheese. So this is how I have my eggs these days. Uh, sunny side up. Uh, on a toast with that, which has cheese on it, like a American cheese, <laughs> a little bit of mustard. <laughs> I've been eating that since I was literally like twelve years old. Oh since gosh. I was allowed to like turn on the the stove. Uh, pancakes, waffles, or French toast? I'll eat all of them. Waffles. Just shove them all in my face right now. Waffles. English or American? Oh, muffin? give me. I'm a French toast fan, though. That French toast is so. Mm. English or American muffin? I guess American muffin is like a muffin. And it's, oh wow! It's got to be an American muffin. Just so more flavor options. For oh, I do love an English muffin. Yeah, I love an English muffin too. Yeah. Finally, bacon or sauce. Here's the thing about the muffin. If I'm having French toast, it's already very rich and. Oh, sugar, you want sugary. the English muffin? Yeah. Well, the English muffin. Yeah. If I'm having, if I'm just having coffee and a muffin, then give me a muffin muffin. Yes, like a yes blueberry totally, muffin. totally, totally. Agreed. Uh, bacon or sausage? Oh, bacon. It's bacon. I oh, like man. sausage, man. But- if you get some good sausage with a little bit of kick to it. Very few things are better than but that. But if I had to choose, you can't have both. Having to choose, I'd go with bacon. I'd probably go with sausage. Oh, I love myself some bacon, but I'd probably go with sausage. I love sausage too, though. Yeah, it's good, man. I'm happy we agree on that. <laughs> I love you, man. Uh, Aaron Smith, who do you guys see Kofi's next feud being with after he beats Dolph at Stomping Ground? Who's next for Kofi? He seemed to have gotten over the Kevin Owens thing. That seems yeah, to be the yeah, past. He already beat Kevin Owens. I mean, maybe Sami Zayn or Andy Orton. Randy's got to be Alistair, though. Right? That's got to so. be there. I, mean, I know they had a house show match. So, Buddy Murphy. Effing Buddy Murphy. Launch him straight into the title scene as a make good for not having him on TV since his weird promo. There you go. Look at me. I'm the best kept secret. Um, that's so hard. Um, Anthony Casillas. Do you guys think the whole Shane McMahon storyline leads to him taking the title off Kofi? I personally would like to see Drew have a fantastic run with the title. I'd prefer to see that. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, I think that'd actually be good. Drew transitions to Kofi. He can take that title off him. Yeah. Not Shane, man. Not Shane. I don't see it. It'll probably happen, but I don't see it. I think it's about 50-50 chance at this point. Stuart Lee, without big names, is there anything Ring of Honor can realistically do to stay relevant? What is their best path of being successful as AEW and WWE occupy the top? Two spots in American wrestling. Do what they've always done. Don't try to be WWE. Yeah. Don't try to be AEW. It's not going to work. You, you helped them with All In. That was a bad idea. But you did it. You own it now. Yeah. Maybe learn <laughs> from what worked at All In. Learn. Focus on the wrestling. Yeah. Don't try to bring in people who don't fit into what Ring of Honor historically has been. Namely, Enzo and Cass. <laughs> Oh, I'm 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 cool with Cass, man. I feel um, bad for that guy. Yeah, I kind of feel he went, bad for him. He too. went through a lot of stuff. Yeah, he went through a rough period. Um, and don't worry about... Like, I think if the creative's good, the wrestling's good, people will watch it for that, whether there's huge names attached to the company or not. It might not be the largest audience. I mean, I'll be honest, man. Their presentation is so dated. It really is. Like, if you, if you watch Impact, which I know nobody does... 
But if you watch Impact, dude, Kevin Sullivan is somehow like a, a, a genius at that stuff. Mm-hmm. At like the video packages. And I saw him at Starcast. That dude is old. Yeah, he is. But he's got a brain on him still. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. And that Nitro book really puts him over. Oh, puts him over big time. It's that's awesome. Made me sad that I didn't go up to him and talk to him. Yeah. Same with a bunch of people, man. I wish I, would, I, I, wish I went up to talk to Lawler. Not about wrestling, but about art. That dude could have oh, been this generation's Norman Scott Rockwell. Scott Norton behind us, and he seemed like like the warmest dude. I know, man. Just to say hey, hey, and pick his brain a little bit. I'm just too shy, and I don't like bugging people. Yeah, I know, me too. I feel like like Beefcake behind us. He seemed he seemed totally pleasant. It seemed like a grandpa, but like a really sweet old yeah. grandpa, but in the body of like a big jack dude. Yeah, we probably got to have sat and shot the shit with him for a half hour. Maybe, yeah, yeah. He seemed super nice, really down to earth. Yeah. Uh, Greg Morris, you're in the Donnie Darko universe where Ali never got hurt. Kofi wouldn't be champion. What would SmackDown look like had that one injury not happened? Who'd be champion? Daniel, Daniel Bryan. Bryan would probably still be champion. Or uh, Owens. Yeah. It'd be, like a, it'd be a weird Owens face thing. Mm-hmm. He'd probably still be a face. Yeah, I think he would be. Yeah, it wouldn't be as fun. wouldn't be as interesting. Kevin Owens just needs to be a heel. He is a he better really heel. Does. I don't know. I kind of felt like they just kind of scratched the surface of what he could have been as a face. I agree. And they try to make him a little too traditional face. Yeah. He needs to be the 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 anti-authority uh, tweener. He, dude, me. I'm telling you, he could be this generation stone cold. Totally could be. He could have that company on his back. Yep. Stock price could be through the roof. Yep. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I just The fact that they didn't do it that way, instead they introduced him having popcorn with the sun. Yeah, like I just I don't they know. try to make him super. I mean, he is, you know, he's a fairly relatable guy. Yeah, but they try to do, and I don't want to see him. I want to see him like doing what Seth did this week. You know, going around it's like he should be people. a bad guy who gets turned on by an authority figure of some sort, and then everybody's behind him and he just starts whooping people's asses. Yeah, yeah. He had the stunner. Yeah, I know. His uh, catchphrase is "Fight Owens, fight." He should be out there fighting. Yeah, like we saw when, uh, when uh, uh, Becky was rising to the top of the card. Right. Well, this will be fun to put together. Oh, wow. Anyways, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Be a part of Going In Raw today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Starting at $1 a month, you can enjoy Going In Raw ad-free, gain access to the daily 30-minute Going In Raw post-show, exclusive merchandise, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description.